Um, our next presentation is from the other of our missing bodies who said, I can't miss this show. Uh, so what we have is uh, Sean Cole, who is a professor at the uh, Harvard Business School um, and a member of the Poverty Action Lab at MIT and here. Um, uh, he will be talking on the value of advice, uh, evidence from a mobile phone-based agricultural advice service in India. So here we go. Hi, I'm Sean Cole from the Harvard Business School, and it's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you about my research. I'm really sorry that I can't be here uh, today. Unfortunately, my prior travel plans uh, preclude a personal appearance. So I'm here to talk about a paper called The Value of Agricultural Advice, Evidence from Agricultural Production Practices. This is joint work with a PhD student of mine, Nilesh Fernando. And the motivating question behind this paper is that there's dramatic variation in the level of agricultural productivity around the world from country to country, or even within regions, some states experience higher levels of productivity than others, or even within the states, some farmers very close to each other have quite uh, different levels of agricultural productivity. A lot of research is focused on the role of inputs, uh, but in this paper we take a different tack, which is can management practices help explain the variation in this uh, productivity? And in particular, can a mobile phone-based agricultural advice service improve agricultural practices and agricultural productivity? And so uh, the traditional uh, way of reaching farmers is through training and visit style agricultural extension. This has some problems. Uh, farmers are spatially quite spread out often, and so it's expensive to travel to reach them. Uh, sometimes it's impossible because they've left the village to live in huts very close to their field. The, there's a spatial aspect of giving advice. Farmers might need information about a particular uh, pest attack during the season, and it's hard to know before the season begins when you give the extension uh, what types of pests might, might come or what other things might come up. So what we study is an agricultural advice service called AO or Avaz Odlo, which was delivered by, developed by computer scientists from Stanford and Berkeley. And the coding behind it isn't that complicated, but what they focused on was a human-machine interaction and how you can bring a platform that's very similar to the internet to farmers with very low levels of literacy and very low levels of te technological sophistication. So what it is is a voice-based service that does two primary things. First, it provides a push call every week, about five minutes long, that provides relevant, timely, targeted agricultural information. So if certain type of pests have been spotted in the vicinity, the push call might alert farmers to look out for that and provide them guidance with what type of pesticide might be useful in dealing with the pest. The second key feature is that has a question and answer service. So if a farmer has a specific question, they can call in to the service, record that question. Our agronomist will then listen to the question, record an answer. The answer gets pushed back to the farmer, and the farmer gets uh, customized advice on demand. And so what we found in, in this study was that take up was quite high. So our study sample was 1,200 randomly selected farmers in Gujarat, uh, a in state in the north of India, to be in our sample, you had to grow cotton and you had to have a mobile phone. About 90% of the farmers who grow cotton in our area already had mobile phones, so that wasn't much of a constraint. The average age is 46 years old, they have four years of education. We divide them into a group that gets the agricultural advice information service by phone, as well as a traditional control group. So the first thing, the first striking finding we found was that use of the service is very high. 63% of the treatment population called in to ask a question about their own agricultural uh, experiences. And in total, 54% of the push content that we delivered by mobile phone was listened to. So the average farmer in our treatment got about 120 minutes of agricultural advice delivered to them over the phone over a two-year period. And uh, you know, the, the, the first test you want to pass is that farmers report that your, your, your service is a useful source of information. So we asked farmers at a baseline and a midline and an endline, you know, where do you go for information about pesticides, about seeds, et cetera, et cetera. And the farmers in the treatment group are significantly more likely to report our mobile phones as a useful source, as their primary source of information for cotton pesticides and fertilizers, seeds, wheat pesticides, cumin pesticides, pest identification, and weather. Importantly for us, they weren't more likely to report uh, cell phones as a source for price information. We didn't offer price information in the service. Of course, where the rubber hits the road is whether you can actually affect agricultural practices. To facilitate analysis, 
we aggregated behaviors in each specific category up to a single index. So for example, we found that the information service improved cotton pest management practices, cotton fertilizer practices, and cotton sowing and input practices relative to the control group. These effects were statistically significant at the 5% level. In addition, and much to our excitement, the service seemed to have benefited farmers in terms of yield. So we had three groups in the study. We had the control group, we had a group that was the entire treatment group, and then we studied a specific subgroup to whom we sent regular reminders to use the service. These reminders induced uh, additional usage of the service. What we found was that among those who received the reminders to use the service, uh, this group experienced 60 kilograms per acre higher cotton yields. That's off a base of about 690 acres, so that's about a 10% increase in cotton yields. Similarly, both the entire group and the subsample that received reminders uh, experienced significant increases, about 33% in their cumin yields. Taken together, the value of this output would exceed the cost of providing the service, although uh, for the sake of full transparency, I'll note that our estimate of log agricultural profits, while positive at about 16%, is not statistically significant. One interesting thing about information is that, in contrast to fertilizer or seeds, is quite easily spread from farmer to farmer. And we actually designed our study to measure whether peer effects, uh, whether this information affected peers. Before we rolled out the service, we asked each farmer who their primary agricultural contacts were. Then we could compare people whose friends were randomly assigned to the treatment group to people whose friends were randomly instead assigned to the control group. What we found was striking. About 19% of the people whose peers were assigned to the treatment group reported that an NGO with the name of our service was a primary source of information for them. We also found that people whose peers were assigned to the treatment group planted more cumin and reported lower loss of crop due to uh, cotton pests. Finally, we examined whether this service might work in a market context by measuring willingness to pay. To measure willingness to pay, we went to each farmer after the study was over, two years after the service, and said, we're just about to discontinue this free service, but if you'd like to continue for an additional six months, you may do so by paying us 100 rupees right now. And what we did is we randomly varied the price we charged the farmers to measure the demand curve. What we found is that low prices, very high fraction of farmers wanted the service, up to 90% at the price of $1. Once you increase the price to something uh, much higher, say, eight or ten dollars for a six-month period, demand drops down to about eight percent. This provides us some hope that the service may be commercially viable, but it seems like we still have a long way to go. So in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with this. Demand for information was very hard. Among a sample of mostly illiterate farmers, 70 percent of the farmers called in to ask a question. We found very high levels of reported trust in the cell phone information, and we affected agricultural practices agricultural yields, and we seem to have had sig significant spillovers. So this suggests that any rollout offered by a government or an NGO would benefit not just the people who receive the service, but their peers. Thank you very much.